welcome to SEP on YouTube. My name's Jeremy and in this lesson I just want to go through uh, a not so new tool in SEP, the Shatter tool um, and just including uh, Maya fluids and Maya particles and how you integrate them together. So this is the kind of thing that I want to achieve in this lesson and um, <clears throat> so it's nothing really special up here with the shattering, um, but the, the the crack, the areas where it's cracking, um, we've got a fluid emission and particle emission. So I just want to show you guys how to do that. Okay, so let me quit out of that and let's create. Oh, okay. Start off with a plane. Nothing wrong with that. My ground plane, and I'll create a polycube. And we'll bring that up here because that's going to fall onto the ground. And I just want to freeze transforms on that. And from there, I'm just going to run a scatter through there. Oh, let me just load soup shelf first, and load the plugin, and I'll also just set up my hotkey for Smart Connect. And there's a tutorial on how to do that. And you can start using Smart Connect for soup and Maya. So I've got my cube shape and I'm just going to use a scatter node. And if I go into the scatter, I can I'm just gonna turn it into a surface one. And you'll see that we've got plenty of scattered points here. And you can play around with these attributes, point density, number of mixed points, but I always quite like to just play, change the min point to point distance. And that also kind of reduces the number of scattered points on your surface. And the good thing about that is you don't get so many points on the height, so I quite like using that attribute there. But we're going to use a to place our scatter points. Um, I'm going to use a map, and I'm going to paint a map. So if I just select on active, I go onto my my cube shape. And actually, if I'm going to do that, I need to increase the sub D's on this. No, I'm not going to use a map. Actually, I'm just going to use a texture instead. So I'm going to click on, click on active, and then go through to the hyper render node. Create a ramp. Start dialing these things in here. So, if I actually um, my Lambert, throw that ram into my color there, and then you'll be able to see. Let's go create a new material for my ground plane. And then you can see what it's actually doing here. So I kind of want a circular one. Rail doesn't work. Circular. And something like that. 
and then I'm just going to move it and offset. Just got to turn off wrap view and wrap V and then you can start playing around with the translate frame and I've got mine at negative 0 0.120 and I've just centered it inside my plane there. So now that I've got that set up, <coughs> I can start increasing the density of my scatter shape. So back up to the top again and I can start lowering this down and you'll see that I'm getting some more points in there. Just with the, um, the white part of the frame or the ramp and I think that will probably be enough. I'm just going to leave it at about there and then I'm going to uh, add my shatter tool and it's going to shatter my and I'm going to hide that original one and then I'm going to auto evaluate on the shadow node and there we have it I've got to give it a um, material and there's our shattered object I'm going to hide my scatter shape now and just going to give it a different material here so it stands out from the rest, the background, to make it a little bit darker, like so. And now it's ready to become an end cloth. So I'm just going to move all the stuff down here. I add that. Actually, I'm going to pin all this first. Let me move it down. Don't need all this other stuff here. I will need a plane shape though, so I'm just going to get that over here as well, and I'm going to pin that. Okay, and i also just quickly save this in case so I lose my scene, so I'm just going to save that. Just stop. Number three. Okay, so from here we're just going to create an end cloth. Like that. So there's my end cloth, and my end cloth is going to be concrete. And there's my output. So let's just check some settings in here. I think my nucleus node is all okay. My end cloth collisions, and I'm just going to turn the bounce up to one, take the friction down a little bit. Dynamic properties. I'm going to use poly shells and um, I'm just going to take my damping off. And I think that's pretty much it for there for now. So if I slip my ground plane and make that a passive collider, like so. some of the stuff I don't need. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's my output cloth. Oops. Spend half my time reorganizing nodes in here. Okay. can come down a little bit and the bounce can go up friction can go up a bit so if I push play now just bring it down to 60 frames push play I have my ink cloth falling and that should shatter into 100 pieces okay so getting a bit of shatter there Okay, but what we want is actually we want to constrain it in mid air. So if I select my output cloth and I want to go to my vets and I select all my vets. So make sure the bottom ones are selected as well. And then just go to constraint and go transform constraint. Okay. <coughs> uh, 
extremely annoying how um, the node editor keeps on placing nodes all over the place and you spend half your time trying to reorganize your, your graph and view so now if I push play we should get no movement at all which is what we want what we'll do now is we're going to start bringing in some soup nodes to affect the weight map on our component dynamic constraint so our input mesh we're going to pipe through our attribute transfer node so select one of those and that's all the way over here and on the attribute transform, transform node just turn weight on because that's what we're going to be passing and you want to create two bounding objects <coughs> and make them both cubes pin those and create another one pin that as well <coughs> So it's going to be a cube too. So this one here is going to be our uh, positive weight. And this is going to be our negative weight. So we want the positive weight to surround our entire in cloth mesh because we want our weight to start off as 1 like that so just kind of get it round about so it surrounds the whole thing so if we go into here and we just have no fall off and make sure that our selected value is 1 and our negative weight we can take the fall off on that as well <coughs> bring it right down to negative one. So this is going to be the one that actually um, makes our constraints have no adhesion and make our ink cloth fall to pieces. So if we just put that there, nothing's going to happen yet because we haven't hooked up our weight map. So if we select our in component, it should be transferred in in component. And using our smart connect tool, we can just use our out weight PP and glue strength per vertex. And you want to hook the strength per vertex and the weight per vertex up on the in component node. And then inside the in component node, just make sure that you've got per vertex turned on okay so if I push play now you see some movement happening if I just hide my constraints so we can have, see a little bit easier here I've got some break in there and I'm not quite sure whether if we play around with a little bit of strength that we get a little bit more activity happening like that Actually, if I go into my uh, nucleus node and just increase the gravity a little bit now we have a bit more force happening here and it's falling to the ground that let's try that again okay so I just hit my wireframe I shaded so I can see what I'm doing here and I just want to increase my bounding volume just a little bit more this is the negative one and we can see where it's going to crack like that Okay. It maybe it just means 
dropping some of these values down just a little bit more. So 0.2. Now we get the whole floor moving down, so that's probably not what we want. So we go up to 0 0.5, like so. Okay, so I think that's pretty much all we need to do in the dynamic constraint node. In component nodes all set up, attribute transfer is all ready to go. Here's our output, nucleus is all good. Here's our rigid. Okay, so we can still go back in here and we can unhide my scatter shape. And if I want to increase I can increase my point count a little bit and my shader is going to update even more. So obviously the more scatter points I've got, the longer it's going to take to evaluate. And I think that looks it's looking pretty good, so I'm going to hide my scatter shape again and just going to save it hide my two bounding objects and push play now we get a nice detailed crack in our floor like so and I'll just turn on viewport 2 now. Add some space ambient occlusion, screen space ambient occlusion. On my ink cloth node. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. Got some bit of bounce in there. Can't really tell until you, you um, until I do a play blast so you can see the actual speed. So I'm pretty happy with that for now. So I'm just going to save that. Now the next bit is to um, emit my particles and fluids from the cracks of our shape. And um, <clears throat> there's a little bit of mucking around to do this, but the easiest way is to hook it up so the point cloud particle emitter from soup emits from the points of this geo and that kind of works quite nicely if you um, you randomize the position of the emission you can probably get it you know round about um, the point itself a radius around the point but it starts still looking a bit kind of spotty so ideally you kind of want it along the edges of the cracks itself. And one though way of doing that is that we can use a group node and select our edges that we want emission from and create an extrusion from those um, edges and then reverse delete our faces. So all we're left with is just the faces from the extrusion and then we can just do a surface emission from those. So it's a little bit convoluted, but it um, it makes all the difference to your effects. So to do that, let's drop in the group node. OK, 
Okay, so the group node, we're going to say we want edges. Okay, and also we want to select the edges, so we're going to use operation, it's going to be on pattern, and we're going to hit edit. And that's going to create for us um, if you hit select, that's going to create for us an edit group geometry. If we select that and go edge component selection mode, and then we can go in here and select all our edges. Example. Make sure our bottom ones are selected too, I guess. Um, and we can use lasso tool as well. Just hold down the control shift key. And we can select some more edges there. So, like that, and then we can go add. Now, if we just go into our group node and select a display component display node, or display components. And just turn on input component list for our component shape. You can see that the group node has saved our selection as edge components, and this is exactly what we want. So we can go back in here and we can select go into edge mode again, and we can select edge, get the right tool here, and then we can go add, and every time we add one, you'll see that display component tells us immediately that it's been added to our component list, and I reckon we're just about done here, I just need to select probably a few more, and add them. And if we go into a group node, you can see that our selection of edges has been added to our pattern input field. So if there's one that we don't want, we can just delete it from the pattern here. Um, there's no delete or remove here, I'm not quite sure. Maybe I'm not understanding at all that very well. But anyway, so we can close that. So now we know we have our edges. And if I just drop in, I'll just drop in a, um, an extrude. So I drop in an extrude, extrude edge. and hook up the our components in the out geometry. Okay. And I can just hide that my geo. Okay. Go poly extrude. And then I can add another mesh shape. There, I put into mesh. And you'll notice if I extrude like we'll translate, 
we get some pretty messy geometry there so we just want to go down to about 0.1 zoom in there and you can see I'll turn off our display component node and actually change the material on this Okay, that's bringing through my map, but that's right. So, here's my extrusion there. And I basically want to delete all my faces that I don't need. So, to do that, I grab another group node. Okay. Lock all these. Okay, this time this is going to be a face, and I want all of them selected. Okay, and that's the original faces there. And then if I drop them in another group node. bring in the bring in the um, the out mesh from the poly extrude edge into my second group node so the geometry there okay and I go face and I want to select all of them and I believe the pattern is intercept in this case. And if I feed it into a delete component node, and hook up the out components and the out geometry, and then the out geometry into the unmesh, and voila, we have just the mesh. Of our extruded edges. Okay, so so if you didn't get that, basically I've got my extruded edges through my group node selection of all my components that I selected earlier. And then I grab my original faces of the whole mesh shape of the shattered geo, and then I feed that into a second group node. But this time it uses the additional extruded faces that come in, or the extruded edges, but the additional faces that are created from the extrusion are fed into the group node. And then if we hit the intercept, this kind of creates a boolean type effect. And I end up with the faces um, combined or intercepted between the two selections. And so I want to delete those faces and then I end up with my extruded edges, which is exactly what I want. So from here,